Here's the eye model. The conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is a clear tissue that comes from here. It would actually cover a whole front of, or the anterior side of the eyeball. It's not on the model, but you do need to know that the conjunctiva is the outer layer that protects the eye from foreign particles and um, getting infections and things like further into your body. The scleroid coat. The scleroid coat is this white part of the eye. You can see the white part of people's eyes all the time, so you see the scleroid coat. After, when you take off the scleroid coat, you see the choroid coat. That's the middle part of the eye. And then the inner layer of the eye is the retina. Okay. This lighter brown color here is the retina. Okay. On the retina, you can also see that your optic nerve exits the eyeball here, and you can see the other half of it over here. Where the retina is, though, you don't have the retina where your optic nerve exits out. So this is called the optic disc. It's actually a blind spot in your eye because you're not going to have the cones and the rods for vision in those areas. If you look over to the side just a little bit, you see a peachy color right here. It means tan here and it's peachy here, so it looks almost the same color. But that's the fovea centralis. What is in the fovea centralis is what is in your central field of view. Whatever you are staring at is in the fovea centralis so that you have sharp vision for it. You're able to see the individual letters. You're able to see you know, the difference between one millimeter and two millimeters on a ruler. So that's the fovea centralis. Um, the lens. The lens is this part of the eye here. Put this, down right this is the lens here and it fits right here. This is the, the colored part of the eye is the iris. You can see it has that bluish yellow color here. And you can see it has the other top part of it here. Here's the iris here. Okay, if you look on the inside there of the iris and we turn it around, you see the red muscle with those white lines? That's the ciliary muscle. The ciliary muscle is going to control the size or the shape of the lens so that it's able to make the image on the retina in focus or not in focus. It's supposed to focus the image on the retina. Okay, the pupil. Turn it around. You see the space here. There's nothing that is in that space if you put the eyeball back together. There's just a space there. It goes directly back here to the posterior part of the eye. That is the pupil. The reason the pupil looks black is because there's no light inside of the eye to give it a color. If there were a light inside of the eye, the pupil would look red. And that's why you have the red eyes in people's pictures. The cornea. This is the cornea here. It's the outermost part of the eye. Corneal transplants were the first transplants done. Okay, the aqueous humor and the vitreous body. Can you give me a pointer, please? The aqueous humor and the vitreous body. This is actually the vitreous body. The vitreous body is like a jelly. The aqueous humor is going to be anterior to the lens. So if you look at it kind of to the side like this, you have the vitreous body that is posterior to the lens, and anterior to the lens, you'll have the aqueous humor. Okay. Whenever you're looking at different areas of the eyes, there's two of them that you want to know. You have the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. The posterior chamber is in between the iris and the lens, so it's right back here. The anterior chamber is between the iris and the cornea. Both of them will be filled with aqueous humor. But if on your test, if a number is like right here and it says name this area, you would put posterior chamber. Name this area, it would be anterior chamber. What fluid is located in either one of them is the aqueous humor. The fluid that is located posterior to the lens is the vitreous body. You have six eye muscles that move the eyeball. Let's switch models here. You have six eye muscles that move the eyeball. Four of them are named rectus because they are straight. If you can look at this model, this is the nose here. So here's the eyeball. This is the medial side of the eye. This would be the lateral side of the eye. If you look at this muscle, it's on the lateral side of the eye and it comes in straight. That is the um, lateral rectus muscle. We'll remove that one for right now. And look at the top muscle. The top muscle that's straight is the superior rectus. We'll kind of move it to the side. You see the bottom down here? This is the um, inferior rectus. It comes in straight on the bottom of the eyeball. And then you see one here on the medial side that comes in straight, and that is the medial rectus. Okay. 
Then there's one that comes up through here. It passes through this little pulley and comes into the eyeball at an angle. This is the superior oblique muscle, the superior oblique muscle. And it's, it actually has to pass through the pulley and that pulley is called the trochlea. This is the pulley, the trochlea. If you look on the bottom part of the eye, you see another muscle and it's kind of going at an angle. It's going at an angle this side. That is the inferior oblique muscle. The inferior oblique muscles right here. So the inferior oblique, superior oblique, medial rectus, inferior rectus, superior rectus, and lateral rectus. That's the eyeball. Let's look at the ears. This is the pina of the ear. The outside part of the ear that you see is the pina of the ear. This is the external auditory meatus. The external auditory meatus. And it's going, it will lead to the tympanic membrane. So this is the tympanic membrane and you have three little bones in the tympanic, or in the middle ear on the other side of the tympanic membrane. You have the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. I really like them better on this model over here because it shows them enlarged. Okay, this is the way the model fits in to your um, ear. This is the tympanic membrane here. The malleus is the little bitty bone number three. It actually touches the tympanic membrane if you look closely at it. Then you have the incus, which is here. It does not touch the tympanic membrane, so it's the incus. And then um, you have this bone right here. This is the stapes. I'm going to let me lift this up so you can see it a little bit better. The stapes, notice that the base of the stapes, what shape it is, it's oval. So that's called the oval window. If you took the stapes off, you would see the oval window. Okay, um, on the inner ear, you have two, two main structures. You have the cochlea and the vestibule. This is the cochlea here. This is for hearing. It's the snail-shaped um, classic kind of example most people are aware of. This right here is the vestibule, and all of the vestibule you have semicircular canals coming off of it. You have three rings, the semicircular canals. Okay, if you look on the underside, you see that you have this circle right here, and that's called the round window. The round window is there to allow vibrations out so you don't hear an echo after you hear a sound. Okay, and just so you'll know, this right here is your cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve and this is the vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay. We did miss this structure right here. On this model, you have this structure here going from your middle ear down to your pharynx. That's called the, I mean the pharyngeal tympanic tube, the auditory tube, or the eustachian tube. All three of those names would be correct. So that's all of the structures on your ear. This model here, turn it this direction. This model here is a cross section of the cochlea. This structure right here is the cochlear duct. The cochlear duct. The cochlear duct has hair cells in it. See these cells? And they all have these little hairs up here at the top. Whenever you hear a sound, the fluids in the ear are going to be vibrating, and it's going to vibrate this membrane right here, and it hits the hair cells. And so the hair cells are going to tell the information to the cochlear nerve, which tells the brain, here's what you're hearing. So this branch right, or this area right here is called the cochlear duct. This is your basilar membrane, and these are hair cells. You have fluid in each of these compartments here. You have endolymph in the cochlear duct, and you have paralymph in these other two areas. This is your scala vestibula and your scala tympani. You don't have to know the names of the areas, but you do need to know that they have um, paralymph inside of them.